MacArthur's grace to you.org. Okay. And I'm going to read directly from it. Okay. So that I don't misrepresent his uh, stance on lordship salvation. So, quote, the gospel that Jesus proclaimed was a call to discipleship, a call to follow him in submissive obedience, not just a plea to make a decision or prayer, uh, pray a prayer. Jesus' message liberated people from the bondage of their sin while it confronted and condemned hypocrisy. It was an offer of eternal life and forgiveness for repentant sinners. But at the same time, it was a rebuke to outwardly religious people whose lives were devoid of true righteousness. It put sinners on notice that they must turn from sin and embrace God's righteousness. Our Lord's words about eternal life were invariably accompanied by warnings to those who might be tempted to take salvation lightly. He taught that the cost of following him is high, that the way is narrow and few find it. He said many who call him Lord will be forbidden from entering the kingdom of heaven, Matthew 7 verse 13. He goes on to say present day evangelicalism by and large ignores these warnings. The prevailing view of what constitutes saving faith continues to grow broader and more shallow, while the portrayal of Christ in preaching and witnessing becomes fuzzy. Anyone who claims to be a Christian can find evangelicals willing to accept a profession of faith whether or not the person's behavior shows any evidence of commitment to Christ. In this way, faith has become merely an intellectual exercise. So what advocates of lordship salvation say is we have so many false converts within the church today because when they went forward at the altar call and accepted Jesus Christ they accepted it only with their mind not with their heart not with a full understanding of who Christ was and so we have this watered down gospel that is not preaching a call to discipleship not telling people to pick up their cross and follow them follow Jesus and we need to get back to understanding who Jesus is as Lord, not only Savior. He goes on to say, This shallow understanding of salvation in the gospel, known as easy believism, stands in stark contrast to what the Bible teaches. To put it simply, the gospel call to faith presupposes that sinners must repent of their sin and yield to Christ's authority. This, in a nutshell, is what is commonly referred to as Lordship Salvation. And that's what, uh, that's what John MacArthur says there regarding what he teaches about Lordship Salvation. So, for myself, I got saved when I was 20 years old. Um, I, I was a former Roman Catholic. All I know is that when I read Ephesians 2, 8, and 9 that you're saved by faith apart from your works. It was the best news in the world. Because my entire life as a Catholic, I was taught that you had to work your way to heaven and that you didn't really know or could not really know for sure if you were going to get to heaven based on your good works. You were just kind of in limbo your, your entire life. And you were pretty much at the will of the Catholic Church or the priest or whoever deemed you to be saved. So when I heard that the gospel was uh, by faith through grace apart from works. I, I just accepted it with childlike faith. I knew uh, in my heart, even though I didn't know the scriptures where Jesus says, take up your cross and follow me, deny yourself. You're not worthy to be my disciple if you do this. In my heart, I knew that because in my mind, I was counting the cost. And I was like, you know, if I become a Christian, I'm going to have to give up my friends my circle of influence, I might have to forsake my family because my family all believes in the Catholic faith. My life is going to drastically change if I become a Christian. So even as an unbeliever, I was counting the cost. I was weighing it in my mind. At the time, I didn't know those scriptures, but in my heart, this is what was happening because the Holy Spirit was drawing me to himself, illuminating and lightening my mind to what being a Christian really was. And it's interesting because I didn't know any of this um, scripturally. I just knew in my heart what, I, what the call of salvation, the call of discipleship was. But I knew that I did not want to go to hell. And I feared going to hell. And I knew I would go to hell if I, if I died that day. So in May of 2005, I gave my life to Christ. 
And I said, Lord, save me, you know, forgive me of all my sins. And I remember feeling God's presence. And I remember um, hearing the Lord say to me, you are forgiven, my son. You're forgiven, my son. And it wasn't until later on in my Christian walk, maybe a few months, few years later, that I understood the scriptures where it says a call to salvation, call on Jesus as Lord. And so I kind of affirm in a way lordship salvation because you're you're giving your life to the Lord of your life, Jesus, right? You're deciding to follow him and forsake the old man and become a new creation. Uh, but at the same time, the pe- people have a problem with lordship salvation because to them it seems to add works. Like repentance is, like repenting from sin is a work, which we know that's not the gospel. And I do not think that's what MacArthur means. MacArthur has written a lot of books, a lot of literature on false conversion about people who think they are saved and are not. And that's a very dangerous place to be. You know, it's one thing to be an atheist and know you're not right with God and reject and rebel against God. It's a whole nother thing when um, you're in the church, you grew up in the church, and you think you're saved. And then you end up in Matthew 7 saying, Lord, Lord, did I not do this, that, and the other in the church? And he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. I never had a relationship with you. That is the worst condition anybody can be in. So MacArthur tends to over-exaggerate and teach on examining yourself, which is a really good thing to do because I know some false converts. I know people that think they're Christians, but by their fruit and how they walk and their understanding, there's just, there's no way they can be a Christian, but they'll say, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. And we have a lot of cultural Christians here in the South. In the Bible Belt, we have a lot of cultural Christians. Now I'm not saying we should go around and fruit inspect everybody, but you know who your brothers and sisters are. I mean, you can, you know, you know, your spirit bears witness with their spirit. You're, you're my brother. You're my sister in the Lord. They understand the gospel. They know Jesus. They love Jesus. So I think it's a good thing to have the church uh, examine themselves, especially, if, you know, that's between them and God at the end of the day. But it's our responsibility to deliver the message. And I think John MacArthur and Paul Washer do a good job of that. And it can come across as a workspace salvation. It can come across as harsh as fruit inspectors, as Pharisees. But I think if you know the rest of their ministry and you know and you've heard enough of their other preaching and you've heard them preach the gospel, overall the big scope of their ministry, it makes better sense why they are calling um, the sheep to examine themselves. Because at the end of the day, you know, um, you're gonna examine yourself and you're gonna have the spirit. And the Bible says in Romans 8, verse 16, it's not our job to affirm somebody else's salvation. It's the Holy Spirit's job to affirm the other person's salvation. Listen to what it says in Romans 8, 16. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And then back up to verse 15. You did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. Don't fear uh, being uh, not being saved, but you receive the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. So when you receive the Holy Spirit, when you're sealed with God's signet ring, the Holy Spirit, as Ephesians uh, chapter 1, verse 13 and 14 say, God's Spirit is going to bear witness with your spirit. No matter how many trials you go through, no matter how many times the devil tells you that you're not saved, you're not good enough, the Holy Spirit is going to confirm you as a child of God. And I, I thank the Lord that he did that when I got saved. He said, you're forgiven, my son. And from that time on, he really just confirmed that I am a Christian. I have the Holy Spirit. I may mess up and fall. I might have to confess and repent at times, but I'm a believer. I'm secure in Christ. No one can pluck me from my Father's hand. So, m and 6131, I really pray that that answered your question about Lordship Salvation. There's a lot of people on YouTube condemning uh, pastors and preachers who teach Lordship Salvation. I think it's a misunderstanding uh, it is not a workspace gospel. It is a call for people who um, who think they're saved just to examine themselves. And at the end of the day, the Lord will confirm whether you're a believer or not. In fact, it says in Timothy, the Lord knows those who are his. Okay.